Muffies, got your muffies there. All right, gentlemen, you had your instructions downstairs. Both your trunks are high, so punches here are fine. Shake hands and good luck to both of you. All right, here we go. Our main event just about set to go. Romero Duno said this. He said, quote, I'm hungry for a world title fight, so I'm very eager to win tonight. I also want to get revenge for my countryman and friend, Marcito Hesta. So a lot of things going on in the mind of Mr. Duno. And it's probably the same thing going on in the mind of Rodriguez because that's what makes the Philippines versus Mexico rivalry so hot is that there's the country pride and the fighters often come from desperate, very poor third world backgrounds. So they're very hungry in there. And the traditions of their great fighters, it's usually aggressive fighters. With the Philippines, obviously, you have Manny Pacquiao, and even going all the way back to the 20s and 30s, very popular Filipinos who fought in the United States, guys like Pancho Villa, who was a flyweight champion, and Seferino Garcia, held a version of the middleweight title. These guys were very popular fighters because they were all action. All right, let's bring in Beto Durant. Beto, what do you got? And this fight was made the night, actually the hour after Mosso beat Mercito Hesta. Roberto Diaz, Golden Boy matchmaker, was watching that fight online, and he called the manager of Mosso. He called Paco and said, hey, I want him for Hesta. Paco said, let me talk to my fighter. Talked to him the following day. He's like, look, this is a tough fight. Juno has a lot of power. I don't know if you can hang with him power-wise. The Mexican said, you don't believe me? You don't have faith in me? Give me him. Somebody's got to go down. I'm going to knock him down. He, he was upset because his managers didn't feel like he should take this fight. That's exactly right. He said, quote, someone is going to get knocked out, and it's not going to be me. See, that's that pride that I was talking about. Big punches early on from both men. Yeah, I was about to say, they're exchanging heavy lever. Uh, you know, and I, I, I think that when you're fighting Duno, I think it's smart to work behind a jab to try to control the distance and move around him. You take the fight right to him, you can walk into that power. You know, this training camp, Duno started in the Philippines. And then the last two months, he trained here in California at the Wild Card Gym. Yeah, that's where all Filipino prospects just naturally gravitate to because that's where the legend of Manny Pacquiao was, was forged. Was born, that's right. He now has a two-month-old baby daughter. He says he's inspired by her every single day. That's motivation. You know, we saw King Ryan, Ryan Garcia here earlier tonight. He has a new child as well, and I was talking to him about it, and he said, man, my, my workouts are so focused now because I understand my singular focus and who I have to take care of. It's really amazing that when you start to have kids as a fighter, how it changes the perspective of what you're doing. Yeah, it gives more purpose to their workouts and, and to their career. That money just doesn't go to them anymore. <laughs> I know that's right. All right, we're coming to the end of our first round schedule for 10 here in our main event in Indio. Which one do you want? Okay, back up. Segundo, second round, babe. Welcome back, round number two. Beto, Dougie, the coach here on Thursday Night Fights, Golden Boy and the Zone. 
are watching us around the world. Big combination. Rodriguez looking to establish respect early on in this fight. He needs to do that. Duno is very dangerous early. You don't want to give him any confidence. Duno, big. Right hands. Duno's body shots are heavy. He's going really hard for the body. And that's smart against a veteran, somebody who's got some miles on that odometer. Is 56 days enough? Between, I think it's perfect. Is it? Yeah, I mean, he, does, he didn't have any time to get out of shape. I mean, he, he, he sat out all of, of 2018. Uh, whatever ring rust he had, he knocked it off by uh, upsetting Brasito Hesta. All right, Beto, you got something else for us? Uh, Kumustan and Mabuhan, as they would say in Tagalog, because it's breakfast time right now in the Philippines where Duno's family is having Longanisa and watching this fight online. On Sunday, it's going to be shown on national TV around the entire country, all the performances. Duno is becoming a big deal in the Philippines, and everybody is tuning in. So if you start getting a bunch of followers from the PI right now, you know what's up, coach. Hey, I'll take it from anywhere, you know what I mean? His, his last fight was nationally televised. Did great ratings. I can't even imagine what it must feel like to be the face of a country, the face of a culture. And also, wow, also the pressure that must come with that as well. That's a lot of pressure for a 23-year-old. If you're watching us right now from the Philippines, send us a tweet. Let us know. Say what's up. Now Rodriguez takes a body shot from Duno. And this is a very even round. Rodriguez is giving as good as he's taking, but the harder shots are being landed by Duno. Now Rodriguez is just standing right there, going nowhere, and now Duno is really missing big with a lot of his shots. Yeah, he's getting a little bit wild. He's got to be careful in these exchanges. Right now, the man with the cleaner technique, at least with the straight punches down the pike, is Rodriguez. No doubt. Inside 30 seconds. Rodriguez is doing a good job with his jab. Boy, Duno is just unloading, hoping to connect. <laughs> that was beautiful, that big hook. The eye catching shots, the power punch is being landed by Duno. Boy, he is not holding back. Round number two in the books. Zone app on your smart TV, mobile, game console, or tablet. Choose your subscription and annual pass with a flexible monthly plan. Sign up, create an account, and start streaming over 100 boxing and MMA fight nights a year. Plus, the MLB Live Whip Around Show Change Up. Only on the Zone. Welcome back. Thursday Night Fights, Golden Boy, The Zone, round three. Thank you. And these two, Rodriguez and Duno, have been absolutely throwing haymakers. It's been a fast and violent pace. And although I've scored the first two rounds to Duno because he's the guy landing the harder punches in there, Rodriguez is landing his shots. And the proof of it is on the face of Duno. You can see some abrasions. You can see some redness around his eyes. A little bit calmer start here to the third round than we've had in the first uh, two. Well, if Duno got any wilder than he was in the, in the previous round, he'd really be opening himself up to getting clipped with a power shot. We have to remember, Rodriguez isn't just the, the more experienced fighter in there. He can punch himself. He's got more knockouts than Duno has fights. Well, you don't beat Hesta by a fluke. He controlled that throughout, 
And he is definitely holding his own here tonight. Yeah, that, that's, that's a very good point. And you can understand why Rodriguez is not intimidated by Duno or the prospect's power punching reputation because in Mercito Hesta, he was facing oh, a very big shot by Rodriguez. Yeah, in Hesta, he was facing an experienced fighter, somebody who was world class, and he knocked him out. So he's fighting a kid right now who's not yet world class. And right now, Rodriguez has landed two or three really good shots on Duno. Duno landed a right hand off the ropes and another right hand, but he's losing his footing. One thing that's lacking from Duno is a jab, and that's one thing that Rodriguez is doing very well. He's setting his power up with his body shots with that, that, that southpaw jab. Oh, Duno is taking some big time shots here in this third round. Yeah, this third round belongs to Rodriguez so far. I am not sure if Duno thought that this would happen to him, but Mentally, he had to see what happened to Hesta and say, listen, this is going to be a fight. Listen, he would have been a fool to underestimate Rodriguez. Another big left hand by Rodriguez. Just measuring now big right from Duno. Inside 20. So not only are the skills of Duno being tested in this fight, but his character is being tested. Ten seconds, Duno. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell, guys. Stop at the bell. All right. In between rounds, I want to listen in to the blue corner. Beto, we had some issues with Rodriguez. Yeah, so Rodriguez came from Mexico City. His flight to get to Indio had to go to San Francisco. Well, in San Francisco, the fog got him. And because he had to go through customs, he missed his connecting flight to get to Indio. And that was on uh, Tuesday. So he had to stay at the airport. He was so worried about missing his, his next flight to Indio, he checked into the airport right next door, but he didn't go to sleep. So he was in the room, but he stayed awake. So this is a guy who was cutting weight, couldn't eat, and was so paranoid about missing the next flight that he went back to the airport. Finally, he got to the weigh-ins, but he had been in contact with Golden Boys Travel, let them know what was going on. So he wasn't at the official weigh-in, but he had a weigh-in a couple hours later. But the reason that he went to San Francisco is because that was the connecting flight to get him to Indio. It's, uh, how do you get to Indio, coach? Any way you can if you're Rodriguez right now. Apparently so I tell you what you just described torture to me you know what though with his experience he's been through stuff like that he's been through worse experiences when, when he fought Jezreel Corrales who's a, a, a former world title holder at 130 pounds he traveled to Panama to fight Corrales in his home country when he faced Billy Dibb who's a, a former featherweight champion he traveled to Australia to face Dib in his home country. So he's used to traveling and, and everything that comes with that. We'll travel, we'll fight. All right, let's take a look after that big right hand at Dougie Doug's scorecard. Right now you got Duno up uh, by just a point. Yes, he had an excellent third round. And I'll tell you this, the first two rounds were very close. Like I said, I just edged them to Duno because he was landing the big, dramatic, eye-catching shots. But really, the more consistent fighter, offensively speaking, in those opening two rounds was Rodriguez. Power punches in round three look like this. A lot have been thrown. Yeah. Rodriguez is the busier of the two, and he's landing a lot. Duno landing at a slightly higher connect rate. Remember, Duno Boom. has gone 10 full rounds just once. He better be ready to fight a hard oh. 10 rounds tonight. Big left hand by Duno. Catches Rodriguez. Here's the problem. Rodriguez can catch. He's got a good chin. He's got a great chin. Might be wise to go to the body. He's landing to the head and he's busted. He's busting up Rodriguez to the to his eyes. There's a, a bad cut on the left the, the left corner of the, the left eye of Rodriguez. I see that now. And he has blood just streaming down the left side of his face. 
That's a bad cut. I wonder if it was from a punch or from a headbutt. Inside a minute here in this very exciting fourth round. Hey, they were throwing down. They were throwing big time. That was that was just pure slugging right there. If it turns into a slug fest, who does it benefit? I think it benefits the veteran. I think it benefits Rodriguez. He's used to fighting hard fights. He's used to fighting 10 and 12 rounds. However, if, if that cut becomes a factor, who knows? Big if left that, hand. Yeah, if, that, if that blood in, uh, impairs the vision of Rodriguez's le his, uh, left eye, makes him open for big right hands, maybe Duno can, make some, uh, he can turn this fight around. And Rodriguez straight left, then a right. And if Duno needed a wake-up call, well, he's got it now. Beto, you talk to the referee, what do you have? Raul Caillou Sr. said it's an accidental headbutt. That's the call to cut on the Mexicans. Uh, All right, let's look at the replay and see exactly how it happened. Let's see here. And, yep, right yeah, there. Rodriguez backs him to the rope, and, and, and as Duno was loading up with the right to the body, he lunged in with his, his head. And his, it basically, his forehead collided with the, the, the left eye socket. I got oh, Rodriguez, from both Rodriguez looks at him like, dude, that was a headbutt. I have been incredibly impressed with the game plan and the toughness by Rodriguez here tonight. If you're going to step in the ring with this dude, you better pack a lunch, pack dinner, and understand you're going to be here for a minute. Now, Rodriguez makes for grueling fights. All right, here we go. Respect, round number five. We are live at the Fantasy Springs Resort and Casino here in Indio, California. Kind of for Golden Boy, our home away from home. Just two hours straight east of downtown Los Angeles. Body shots by Duno. Yeah, Duno starting off dialed in. He was working his jab, aiming punches to the midsection, landing shots as he was backing away. Some of Duno's body shots are straying below the belt line. He hasn't been warned for that yet by uh, referee Raul Caiz Sr. Boy, with every round that passes, Rodriguez, good combination. Duno continues to try to throw that big one-punch knockout. And it's getting crazier and crazier. He's landing some monster punches. Just that the, the chin of Rodriguez is holding up. I mean, you can hear these shots. It's terrific leverage on the punches from both fighters. Total punches so far looks like this. Pretty much even. Landed, not so much. I think Rodriguez is better with the combinations when they're in close. He mixes the, the, the body and head punches very well. And now Duno is taking some punishment, courtesy Rodriguez. It's Rodriguez is stepping forward, putting smart pressure on Duno. Not getting wild, he's keeping his hands up. You saw the numbers on how many of these punches are power punches. Yeah, most of them. Yeah, you wonder how long can both men keep this pace going. All right, this is what you call a battle of attrition. Rodriguez continues to catch Duno. That old saying, you never know how tough somebody is until they hit you in the chin. I think Duno understands what his buddy Hester went through just two months ago. Yeah, and I would say Rodriguez is fighting exactly the same kind of fight. He's setting the pace on the Filipino fighter. And he's, he's letting his hands go more. He's basically working for three minutes of the round, whereas the Filipino fighter, which is the better athlete, is getting off in, in flamboyant spots, letting his hands go here and there. And they're hard punches, and they're flashing, and they're, they're attention-grabbing. 
But maybe the guy doing more damage is the Mexican fighter. All right, we are officially halfway home in this main event. Scheduled for 10 rounds. Now let's look at some of the landed punches, which are power punches by Romero Duno. 85.2%. That is a high percentage. And he's a bomber. Boy, both of these two, you can see the battle scars. And for Juan Rodriguez, the lightweight average is about 60%. He is also uh, well over that as yeah, far as punches guys are above that. Yeah, 72.5% for Rodriguez. Um, not as high as, as Juno because he's working a jab. Let's take a look at some of the uppercuts, which I guess you can consider those uh, power punches. Oh, yeah. The way they throw them. The most devastating kind of power punch. You got to get in close and get tremendous oh. leverage. That was a left uppercut landed by the Mexican fighter. Hey, you know, get your punches in. Fall short there. What would you be telling? Right and a left. Duno right and now. The, breaks the body with the right. Uh, I'd be telling Duno to get his jab going and to come forward. Duno is at his best when he's coming forward. Um, he can fight okay backing away, but I don't think he's as effective when he's trying to, to, to evade the fight. Duno has just one blemish. On his record, 19 wins and 20 professional fights, 15 knockouts. Duno can box a little bit, but his mentality is out of a puncher. He's got the natural power, he's got the speed. Good right hand. His last fight, February 9th, three months ago down in the Philippines, won by a second round knockout. Let me go deep, Donda. Yeah, dude from um, from India. He's had like a seven and one record. Have you seen that knockout? Yes. It was chilling. It was frightening. You, you gotta have I a good chin. devastating. Yes, yeah, it was. I think uh, one of the, the Filipino broadcasters uh, dropped a few F-bombs. <laughs> I guess you could do that. I don't blame him. It, I, I was, guess it was that kind of knockout. If it's my last night ever working, <laughs> yeah. I'm going out with a blaze of glory. I mean, that would be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, it would be. And now Rodriguez again connecting on Duno. Another good round for Rodriguez. Rodriguez wisely going to the body. I think that's one of the things that Duno needs to do. The more Duno gets hit, the wilder his punches are becoming. Yeah, his technique has, has fallen off since the opening two rounds. And by the way, I've scored the last three rounds for Rodriguez. Oh, and Duno! And Rodriguez is hurting Duno now, snapping the head back with those straight lefts. I think he's tired, I think he's surprised. Yes. And Duno takes another straight left. Rodriguez could go to his manager and say, see, I told you so. <laughs> Never, ever doubt me. His manager did not want him to take this fight. And he said, I want to prove to the world how good of a puncher I am, how tough I am. Well, Rodriguez, you're doing exactly that to all of us. You know what? He's, he's got heavy hands. He's got a rock solid chin. But he's a really good technician. He's got underrated boxing craft. I am incredibly, incredibly impressed by Mr. Rodriguez. And he is certainly earning the respect of Mr. Duna. Well, we want you to be involved via social media. Steve says, let's go Romero Duno. Thursday night fights on Spectrum in the LA area. How we doing guys, okay? So send your tweets in via Twitter or Instagram. Thanks for watching all over this great nation of ours. We had some uh, big time flurries in the last round. Yeah, you know what? Duno needs the moral support because Rodriguez had a big round connecting with his left. 
backing Duno to the ropes. Landing the, the left cross, the right, the right hook. One twos. The fighter putting his punches together is Rodriguez. He lands the left jab, kind of to the chest, and he's evading these uh, return punches from Duno. Are you surprised that Rodriguez has been able to control the pace of this fight? No, because he's that kind of fighter. He's, he's consistent. He, he works three minutes of the round. That's, that's how he wears guys down. He doesn't have one punch knockout power. Um, I am a little bit surprised that he's taken the best shots at Duno as well as he has, both to the head and the body, because Duno did come out firing. Boy, Duno is just putting his head down and diving in, hoping to catch Rodriguez. And instead, Duno continues to get caught. Yeah, Duno's defense has, has dwindled. He's been diminishing, diminishing technique every round. And I would say starting with round three, when well, Rodriguez think, really started to put it on a body yeah. and head. But Duno's really starting to take some rather serious punishment. And here's the thing, and with Rodriguez, you can't take a break. You can't just get off in spurts. You can't just fight in spots. You gotta be dialed in and focused three minutes of the round because he just keeps working. And he's not just throwing punches. He's working behind a jab and he's placing his punches and he has a, you know, correct glove placement. He's keeping his hands held high where he can block punches. And he's got, you know, underrated defense too. He'll, he'll kind of duck and slip some punches every now and then. You know, we talk about building your resume, building your career, wanting to work towards those big fights. Well, the one thing you can't allow yourself to have is an off night. You don't look impressive. You certainly can't have two of them. Some more low blows from Zuno. It's, it's time he, he received a warning at the very least. Time. So referee Raul Caiz Sr. is going to give Rodriguez up to five minutes to recover from that low blow. I'll give you many warnings. You hit him there. Worked on purpose. Do that again. All right, you heard the referee say you do it again. I'm going to take a point away. So the final warning for Duno. And at this point of this fight, Dougie, he can't afford to have any points taken away. No, Neither guy can. Yeah, he's, I mean, to me, the, the momentum of the fight has switched to the Mexican fighter. And, you know, that was a borderline punch, but uh, I'm glad that uh, Rodriguez took a break because there have been some punches that have strayed below the belt line prior to that shot. Is that a low blow in your mind? It's borderline. It could be called low, but it's on, it's on the belt line. Now, now, Rodriguez isn't wearing his trunks really high. It's not like he's pulling his trunks up to his armpits or anything like that, so. It may have lifted the cup, and the cup may have squished certain parts of, of the One male point. anatomy, so you never know. One oh, point. wow, they're taking a point. One point. Okay, they have taken a point away. Interesting. So after the warning, referee decided to take the point away. Anyway, Caiz is of the mind that Duno did that on purpose. Like he was looking to bail himself out, catch a breather by landing an illegal blow. What do you think? I don't know. I just think he's dead. I mean, no, I, I just think he's tired. I, I think, like you and I have been talking about, his technique has fallen off. So punches that he's aiming for the midsection are just straying a little bit low because he's looping them more. He's I think, tired. I think he's exhausted. Exactly. Yep. I agree with you. Boy, such wild right hands from Duno. I'll, I'll say this, though, if he does land one of those. So far, wow, you can hear the mitts. How hard these punches are being thrown. A true, a true puncher can turn a fight at any minute. He's a true puncher. He lands the right. Right punch at the right time at the right spot. He can end a fight or score a knockdown or at least really hurt his opponent, but that hasn't happened yet. It feels like to me, right now, Rodriguez is winning this fight. Let's listen in to the corner of Rodriguez. I can't hear him. 
Debes de hacerle presión. No, claro, si usted no sale cerquita, no lo dejes afuera. O quiere meter un volado. Eso es lo que quiere entrar. Lo mandaron a tirar a la papá. Que no lo dejes que tú. Ella abajo con combinaciones ¿Cómo rápidas. ¿Cómo está? ¿Cómo está? Bien, bien, bien. Bien, bien, eso tranquilo. ¿Cómo, cómo te sientes, mozo? Aprieta un poquito. All right, so we are heading into the eighth round from either side quickly. What would you be telling your fighter right now? I, I, you know, if I'm in Rodriguez's corner, I tell him to keep his composure, to keep working that jab, and definitely keep working the body because that's wearing out the younger man. And for Duno, I would tell him, you got to come forward. You got to push this veteran back on his heels. All right, we'll see what Duno does. Plenty of respect as these two have gone through an absolute war thus far. Across the top of the hour. Fantasy Springs Resort and Casino. A beautiful evening for Thursday night fights here in the desert. And what three fights we've had thus far. And we had a first round knockout. We had a 10 round war that could have gone either way. And we're, we're watching a slugfest right now in the main event. At this point, the techniques are being thrown out the window just a little bit. Yeah, they're mixing it up. Last round, the power punches that have become such an important stat in this slugfest. And Rodriguez is throwing more and he's landing more at a 46% connect rate, and that's why he's winning these rounds on my scorecard. I've, yeah, I've got, I've got Rodriguez winning from the third round through to the seventh round. I would agree with that. And I think round five was close. Duno landed some bombs in that round, but on my scorecard, the man with the momentum right now, the man with the mojo is Mozo. <laughs> have, you like on, have you been sitting on that one all I've night? I've been looking at uh, his, his trunks, Mozo. I, I kind of like that nickname. I have no idea what it means, but I like it. It's catchy. All right, Beto, you know everything. Well, you know, like the Mexicans, they have two last names. So Mozo is his other last name. It's Rodriguez Mozo, and everybody just calls him El Mozo. And Doug, one wrinkle in Mozo's corner is Marcos Caballero is working cuts, and he's also giving instructions to father of former IBF World Champion Randy Caballero. See, we knew better do everything. He does know everything. And Mr. Caballero is an excellent cornerman. And he's doing a great job. Ooh, and that, was that another oh, wow. low blow? Well, I think it was They're a counting. body shot. And, well, they're calling it a knockdown. Oh, he's got to get up. And Rodriguez gets up at nine. Okay, think, they're calling that a knockdown. I think maybe Rodriguez oh, thought that it was oh. a, a low blow. Big right hand from Duno. He wants to finish this right now. Yeah, he's got to suck it up. Now yeah, there's another borderline shot from Duno. Duno's got to be careful with that, but it's wise to go back to the body because that's where he hurt Poor right Rodriguez. Back. You were, you're exactly right. 15 seconds. Can Rodriguez survive this eighth round? <laughs> what a what left hand from Rodriguez. This guy is so tough. All right, I can't wait to see that one again. Because it kind of came out of nowhere. And Rodriguez went down from that body shot. Duno needed that. He needed a knockdown. He needed a momentum changer. And that definitely took the wind out of Rodriguez's sails. There you see Rodel, my old 37-year-old trainer, former WBC light flyweight champion. All right, here is that knockdown from that eighth round. Let's see what you think, Dougie. Yeah, right hand falls short, and it's a left. Yeah, it was a left in the sweet spot. It was not a foul. It, it was kind of like in the, the liver area. Boom. Ooh, oh, was, yeah. He kind of reached around maybe to the kidney area, so maybe sure that's did. what Mozo was complaining about. He's like, I oh, know that's illegal. But he certainly I, can't throw from behind. He is in so much pain that he stayed down till eight. Yeah, I thought he was just going to stay down. Yeah, I didn't think he was going to get up. 
and uh, referee Raul Caiz Sr. made it very clear, hey, I'm counting. This is a count. You're down. Well, this is the second time that... All right. The ringside right. position is checking the vision. But so that's, I, that's the second time that time. they have checked the eye. Rodriguez will continue. Round number nine. That eye does look nasty, but I think Mr. Caballero's done a good job controlling the flow of blood. Oh, good straight left hand by Rodriguez. And Rodriguez is fighting with a sense of urgency now. That left eye is getting worse, and he was hurt to the body in that previous round. Oh, Duno. Look at that combo. This has been an absolute battle. Terrific fight, and Duno showing us a, uh, his warrior's heart, his spirit, his character, as he was losing the fight. Rodriguez was taken over the fight, and he dug deep, and he found something. He found a shot to turn the fight. Like I said, a true puncher can turn a fight at any time, and he did it with the body shot. And now he's in there swinging away. And these guys are going tit for tat here in, in the ninth round. That was a slip. Rodriguez is tired, though, now. Look at his face. He's tired. I believe he's got another cut. Yeah, under the left eye. Under the right eye. Wow. And... Man, look at that face. He, he's feeling like an old 31. Oh, they're calling he just it. Say he's done? They're calling Damn. it. Wow. 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 That is the corner of Rodriguez. They have to be disappointed. They can't believe it. Dramatic stuff, though. And you know, I had Rodriguez ahead, even with that knockdown round in round eight. I had Rodriguez ahead. There is your score. Yeah. It'd be 10 8 for Duno. Should have had the, the knockdown round. What a turn of events. You can see. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Round 8 was the knockdown. So that was a 10 yes. 8 round. But the other, the round 7 should have been uh, just 10 9 for uh, Rodriguez. Boy, looking at that face, you would never know that he was ahead, probably on every scorecard. And. Whether it was the body shot, the eyes, the cuts. He was, All right, Beto. He was so close. All right, better go ahead. Quick, though, it was an accidental headbutt. That's what Raul Kai said. They're stopping it because of the accidental headbutt. They're going to go to the scorecards. Okay. Wow. It's not a stoppage by Kai. Go to the scorecards because of the accidental headbutt. All right, very good. All right, so you need to stay tuned. We'll have the decision when we come back. An accidental headbutt has stopped our main event. Stick around.
Welcome back here on Thursday Night Fights. Our main event has just been stopped. Uh, the referee said an accidental headbutt, and Doug, uh, we're going to go back, and we tried to find where it possibly could have been. We think we found it. We'll take a look, and then we'll get the decision. Yep. Now backing up. Rodriguez coming in. Now, their heads may have collapsed right there. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the fence already underneath that right, that right eye. So then the referee stopped it right there, went back, talked to Rodriguez, and called the fight because of the accident right headbutt right, right there. Right there. Yep. So it will go to the scorecards. It was not a stoppage for Duna. Right. And, to and be I, clear. And I thought it was. I, I thought that it looked like Mozo just had enough. It did. Like, you know, he it was did. just finished. He was looking worse for wearing. But there it is. The forehead collapses with the right cheekbone of Mozo just as he slips to the canvas. And he gets up from this slip looking like a tired, deflated old veteran. Like he suddenly looked like an old 31. I mean, these two gave it absolutely everything they had. All right, here's how you had the fight when it was stopped. And I've got Rodriguez ahead. I had him winning rounds three through seven. There was the knockdown in round eight, but I'd forgotten there was a point deduction from Duno in round seven. So that's a 10-8 round for Rodriguez. That helps him. All right. I guess we are ready. Let's send it up to Jeremiah Gallegos. Ladies and gentlemen, due to an accidental headbutt, with the 30 seconds of the ninth round, our referee, Raul Gai Sr., stops this one, but there is a technical decision, and we now go to the decision. Here are the score totals. Fernando Villarreal has the belt, 84-85, Rodriguez. Daniel Sandoval has the belt, 85-84, Romero Duno. And Judge Eddie Hernandez Sr. has the belt 86-83 for your winner by split decision at the new oh! NAPO lightweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, from yes. General Santo yes. City in the Philippines, yes. Romero Ripley. Duck. He had to really gut that one out. I thought that Rodriguez was ahead, but as I told you, there were some rounds that were close because of the power punching of Duno. I thought round five could have gone either way. Uh, really, I think Rodriguez, he's proven himself to be a very serviceable gatekeeper. Duno takes a step closer to contender status, winning this NABO belt. He'll get a ranking in the WBO. He's not ready for a ring ranking at lightweight just yet. All right, let's sit it up to Beto. And it was an excellent fight. Get my soul. Why did the fight stop for you? The referee told me if I could continue to see. And I said it was getting a, a It was hard for you to see. It was hard for me to see. How tough was this fight against Romero Duno? Because you said after you beat Mircito Hesta, they called you out right away. And you're like, Damelo, let's go. See, yeah, yeah, they didn't give me enough time to rest. But that, that's not an issue here. He was a better man tonight. You feel like he won the fight? Uh, I guess after all the headbutts and the low blows, I guess he did. <laughs> thank you for coming out. Put a heck of a fight for the fans. Romero Luno, oh, you. you had a battle. I think it was tougher than you expected tonight. Yeah. But you got the victory. How do you feel? Um, I feel so good. Uh, I think so. All the fans here who was watching my fight, um, thank you so much. Uh, also to my opponent. Yes. Man, Rodriguez and his team, uh, thank you so much for the good fight, man. Uh, you have a good heart. And Anytime you have a Mexican and a Filipino fighting, it's going to be a good one. That's what we had tonight, didn't we? How much fun? It's tough because uh, Mexican and Filipino uh, had a strong heart. The fights uh, are so, uh, so tough. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> because you're in there fighting. You have corazón, or they had some other words that they were telling yeah, you. The tienes, pero we won't say those. Mexican. We won't say that word they were telling them in the corner. <laughs> now, for you, 135, I know that you said you'll fight anybody, Linares, or who do you want to fight? It's up to... Uh, yeah, we know it's up to Roberto, but who do you want to fight? <laughs> I don't know yet. Yes, um, I'm depending to... All right, all right, we'll talk to Roberto. But you, yeah. I've also heard that you won't turn down a fight. Whoever he gives you, you say, let's go, bring it. Um, That's the attitude that you have. Let's fight anybody. You'll fight anybody. Yeah, 
Of course. <laughs> All right, yeah. Filipino. Uh, Salama, thank you very much. Yeah, Tia Mexicano, gracias. Let's go back to you, coach. Beto, thank you very much. Class by both guys. And I tell you what, that's as much of a war as you're ever going to see between two men. It 